All right, so here is the first class example we're going to do. What should we do first? Find the common denominator. We need all the denominators to be the same. So we need a 6. What else do we need? An x. So the common denominator here would be 6x. So the first fraction has a 6. What does it need? An x. The second fraction has a 3x. What does it need? 2. The third fraction has a 3. What does it need? 2x. And then what do we do? Yeah, we get rid of the denominators. Now, before I get rid of the denominator, I just want to say what the excluded value is based off what our denominator is, because we have to know what answer we can't have. So what is the excluded value? Zero. X cannot equal zero. Okay. So if I get any other answer, I'm fine. If I get zero, then there will be no answer for the problem. So let's go ahead and get rid of those denominators. So the equation that we're looking at is x minus 1 times 2. So x minus 2 equals 2x. Negative 2 equals 1x. And we're done. Yeah, that's pretty good. Now, if you wanted to check your answer in the calculator... Uh, you could do, let me go ahead and store negative 2 as x. I think this is a nice little trick, this idea of storing um, the answer in for x so that we can just type the equation out. So um, I, I hit negative 2 and then I hit the store button and then I hit for x. So now negative 2 is going to go into x. And then I can just go ahead and type the equation. So 1 sixth minus... 1 over 3x, and it equals 0.33333333, which is 1 third, and so it equals what the original equation equaled. So we know we got the answer right. Okay, let's do the next one. <laughs> 1 over 3x cubed equals 1 over 3x plus 3. Oh, I'm afraid to do this problem. I wrote a note to myself to change something next time to fix it so it worked out better, and I don't know exactly what my note meant. We're not going to do this one. Because I don't want to give you guys a problem that's like, oh, that's horrific. So sorry. We're going to skip that. Again. All right, yeah, we're going to do this one instead. Uh, n squared minus 4n minus 5 over n squared equals n minus 1 over n plus 1 over n. Yeah, so the common denominator here is going to be n squared. So we've got a plain n, a plain n, and an n squared, so n squared is going to win. So first fraction has the denominator of n squared, so we're good there. What do we need to do with the other two? Yeah, multiply by n, multiply by n. Uh, what is our excluded value? Zero. We can't have zero, so as long as we have anything else, we're good. And what do I do now? Yeah, get rid of the denominators. Okay, so I have n squared minus 4n minus 5 equals what? Should we go ahead and start factoring this side? Because I can see that it's factorable. <coughs> yeah. No. Why not? When do you start factoring something? When it equals zero, which it does not. Okay, so please don't do that. All right, so I can see that these two cancel out. 
Okay, we can subtract the n squared. So actually those go away and there's no n squared anymore. So we have negative 4n minus 5. Where did the equal sign go? After the 5, what does it equal? Zero. Zero. Okay, a lot of students will make a mistake right there because they won't know where to put that equal sign. So just keep the equal sign exactly where it was. Everything canceled out, so it left a zero behind. Okay, so watch out for that. That's a really common mistake I find on tests. All right, what should we do next? Add 5. So negative 4n equals 5. Divide by negative 4. n equals 5 over negative 4. So you could say that fraction is negative 5 fourths. You could say it's 5 over negative 4. You can leave the negative on the bottom. You could write a decimal negative 1.25 would be fine there too. Okay. Let's try. I have two more for us. I just want to make sure we can do some that have denominators that are not quite that nice. So 6 over a minus 6 equals a plus 4 over 2a minus 12 plus 1 over 2a minus 12. Common denominator. What about the a minus 6? Wait, are these the same? We need to factor this. So if we factor 2a minus 12, what do we have? 2 times a minus 6. So Gunner was right. I don't know if that was an accident or if that was on purpose. But it's the, it's the factored form. So they're actually the same. So what do we need for our common denominator? We need an a minus 6. What else do we need? We need the 2 in the front. Okay. So the middle fraction has it, the end fraction has it. Does the first fraction have it? Nope. Just like Gunnar said, it does need the two. Gunnar, did you do that on purpose? Yeah. Cool. All right. What is the excluded value? Positive six. So A cannot equal positive six. As long as we get another answer, we're fine. Uh, why is zero not an excluded value this time? There isn't an A by itself. So it says 2 in the front. It doesn't say A in the front. It doesn't say 2A in the front. It just says 2. So since there's not an A there, we're not excluding zero. Okay. So let's go ahead and get rid of our denominators. All right, and what do we have? Perfect. Okay, one last example. Yeah. You can after we do this example. Okay. All right, we've got 2 over r equals 1 over 4r squared plus 6r plus r minus 3 over 2r squared plus 3r. Take a 2 out. What else can you take out? An R. So 2R is the GCF. What's left over? Two 2R plus 3. Can we factor this one over here? Just an R. And what's left over? 2R plus 3. Okay. So the common denominator needs what? It needs a 2r plus 3. It needs the parentheses. 
What does it need other than the parentheses? A 2R. So it's got to have the plane 2 that's in the front. It's got to have a plane R because all three of them had a plane R. And then it's got to have the parentheses. What are the excluded values? <coughs> negative 3 halves. halves. R cannot equal negative 3 halves. It's a fraction because of that 2. And then what's the other excluded value? Zero. zero. So can't be negative 3 halves, can't be 0 because that R in the front. All right, so what do we need to do? This only has the R. What does it need? Okay, so it needs a 2. Now it's got 2R. And then it needs the parentheses 2R plus 3. Okay? Yep. Yeah. Because it's just multiplying. You're just going to multiply them. Uh, we've got 2R, 2R plus 3, so this one's good. What does this one need? 2. Okay, so we have our common denominator. We know what our excluded values are. We can go ahead and get rid of the denominators. So what do we have here? We've got 2 times 2 is 4, so the 4 is being distributed. 8R plus, what was the next number? 12. 4 times 3 is 12. 1 plus 2R minus 6. It's not that bad. Okay, now what do we have to do? You don't have to set it equal to zero. You're just getting the r's to one side. Where did I get the 2r? Right here. 2 times r minus, oh, sorry. 2 times r minus 3. It had the r and it had the 2r plus 3. It did not have the 2 in the front. All right, so we are not factoring. This is not a factoring problem. There's no R squared. This is just a normal solving problem, which means we need to have the R on one side and everything else on the other side. So after we wrote everything in combined like terms, Gunnar suggested that we add the 5 to the other side. So now what do we have to do to get the R's to the same side? Subtract the 8R. So 17 equals negative 6R. So r equals 17 over negative 6, and we're done. That wasn't 0, that wasn't negative 3 halves, so the answer was okay. Um, let's go ahead and check this one, because this one's kind of crazy. So I'm going to go ahead, and in my calculator, I'm going to take um, 17 divided by negative, negative 6, and I'm going to store that as r. Yep. Okay, and then I'm just going to go through and type the original problem. So 2 divided by r, that's what the left side of the equation equals. Now I'm going to plug it in, everything in on the right side of the equation. I want to make sure it equals the same thing. Okay, so I'm going to have 1 over 4 r squared plus 6 r plus r minus 3 over 2r squared plus 3r. And it equals the same thing, so that means that our equation is correct. We solved for the right value. Woohoo! Okay. How are your brains feeling? Good. I mean, that's fair. Um, you don't get to go home, but it's fair. It's fair for you to feel that way. Yeah. All right, so we were doing, um, we were going to do one, but I don't feel like doing one, to be honest. So we're going to do um, 
a color by number sheet and we have m m today and he was making an inappropriate gesture with his hand and so I put stickers over it that say super great. Um, it's not a unibrow, it's the like skin from how he's so frowny. Yeah. Um, I also, this is what I love is that the coloring book is hip hop and it's the entire book is black except for Eminem. <laughs> um, so just like normal, you have all the math problems, you have the answers. Now what I want you to notice is that some of the problems have two answers. How could they get two answers for some of the problems? They had to be factored to get the final answer. So some of the equations, when you're going to solve them, they're just going to be like normal equations, just get x alone. Some of the equations, you're going to be left with an x squared or something, and you're going to have to factor to get the answer. Okay. One thing I want you to notice is that, like for instance, uh, answer P has negative four thirds and answer M has negative four thirds. Do you guys see that? Yeah. Now this one you have to be careful because even though negative four thirds shows up twice, for one of the problems it's going to be the only answer you get. For the other problem it's going to be one of two different answers that you get. You guys see the difference there? Yeah. Okay, so just make sure that those don't get confused. Um, I don't think that happens very many times, but I know for sure it happened with the negative four thirds. Oh, and then here you can see negative 2 happens twice, but one of the times it's answered it's negative 2 and 20. The other time it's negative 2 and 2. So even though it's the same answer, it's technically different because it's part of a pair. Make sense? Okay. So let me get these handed out.